Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us uh, on the Washington Mystics free agent call. Uh, we will turn it over to Mike Thibault. Just please remember when you ask your questions to identify yourself and address uh, uh, who you want the questions to go to. All right. Welcome, everybody. Um, you know, thank you for joining us. Uh, this is a really good day for the Washington Mystics uh, in many, many ways. Um, you know, navigating free agency and offseason, you know, roster changes or fixes or whatever you do, um, you know, takes a lot of um, planning by a lot of people and some very tough choices to make. And uh, I wanted to uh, do this this afternoon because um, we're welcoming back um, several players um, to our team. Uh, welcoming a newcomer that's going to make a huge impact on our team and then allow you all also to talk to Elena. I know about every four days, one of you calls me or texts me and goes, how's Elena doing? So uh, we'll get this all done in one day, including, including our players. So um, we'll talk about that uh, and our plans. Uh, just, just one kind of overview on this. As we went into the off season, I told all of you that we needed to reset um, not rebuild, but reset what we were doing. And I think uh, that we are on our way to doing that. Um, there was never going to be enough salary cap room to sign everybody back on our team. We knew that, you know, we've known that for some time. Uh, we looked at our roster and, you know, decided what our priorities were. And uh, I think what we have today here is a result of that. Uh, I might as well address the elephant in the room first and get it over with, uh, because a lot of people have asked me about uh, Emma Miesemann probably going to Chicago. Um, as we know, uh, Emma, you know, was one of the linchpins uh, for us years ago when we came here to D.C. and tried to rebuild. Uh, but it is free agency, and free agency in its truest form allows players to make decisions for themselves and go where they want. Um, we were not in a position to use our core, nor would it have been a um, smart idea over the course of time to, to do that. Uh, we wanted to have a reliable future going forward. And I think, you know, Maisha represents that for us. Uh, a young player who uh, is in the prime or going into the prime of her career who continues to get better and uh, a longer term commitment to her uh, was a priority for us, um, you know, to go with the core group that we have signed uh, right now. Um, Emma, Emma has played with Courtney Vandersloot and Quigley and those guys in um, Russia for some time. Uh, she's been coached by their coaching staff and, you know, she made a choice that she wanted to do for her future. She was upfront about it with me uh, in the past week. And we wish her well, but I'm excited about what we're doing. And I think from that point on, um, you know, it's about what we're doing. Uh, and so bringing back the group that we did that we re-signed in Shatori uh, and Maisha from last year's team, and bringing back Tiana Hawkins, uh, who we missed a year ago, and adding Elizabeth Williams to our team um, makes us the kind of team that we want to be. Uh, people who go about things the right way who play and compete every single day, who are unselfish players. Uh, they like playing together. And I think we, on top of that, have a chance to become one of the premier defensive teams in the league. Uh, I told Maisha the other day, all the pressure's on her. She's playing with a bunch of players now who have all been on the all defensive team. Elaine and I talked about that a couple of weeks ago. And so, you know, we, we like where we're headed in that regard. And now the pressure's on those two to, to, to try to join them in that group. Um, but uh, I'm excited. Um, I think, you know, Maisha and I have had a lot of discussions over the offseason about what she wants for her future, uh, and I think this is the right decision. With Elizabeth, I think that, um, you know, it's an opportunity to come and play with a group of people who want her here, that appreciate what she brings to a team uh, closer to home so she can, you know, show off in front of all of her family and uh, to, a, to a team and city that she can help build for a championship. And I think that, you know, we have put ourselves back into that group of teams that 
have the ability to compete for a championship. And that's all we want to do. Uh, but the other part of it is you have to enjoy going to work every day to do what you want to do. Um, and I think our team is about that. I think our organization's about that. I think our fans and city appreciate that level of effort um, that these players give. And so, you know, stepping forward, that's what we want to do. And I do want to reemphasize also, although they're not on this call, uh, what we think about bringing back, um, you know, Shatori and Tiana to this team and Megan, who signed back. Uh, we'll have some more announcements this week uh, about something else. But, you know, this is the start we wanted uh, to make for our team. And uh, I'm thrilled to have them here. Um, I'm going to open it up for questions for me or any of the players. I, I, I know Elena will comment about what she thinks is going on with our team, and then she can update you um, on where we are. But I'll open it up for questions, and we'll, we'll see where it goes. We'll start with Kareem. Hey, Mike. Um, congratulations, everybody, Maisha and Elizabeth, um, and you also, Mike. Um, you touched on it real quick, and hey, Elena. Um, you touched on it real quick about, you know, adding um, another big defensive piece. And I was curious, was that a conscious decision of, hey, um, we want to very actively address that side of the ball? Or was it more of a things kind of just fell into place that way? I think it's a little bit of both. I think, first of all, I, I think that for us to be uh, competitive for a championship, we have to be a really good defensive team. And I think that, you know, we didn't get to see last year without Alicia and Elena playing what some of that looked like for us. Uh, and so, you know, let's not forget that we, you know, those two players coming back to health and playing on our team is a huge step toward that. And I think in Elizabeth's case, we, we've talked to a lot of different people, but I think, you know, and, and in fairness to Elizabeth, you know, a lot of people have talked about her great defensive ability, but I think what she's going to be able to do for us is on both ends of the court. Uh, I think she knows how to play in the style we want to play. But clearly, um, you know, I've always respected her since she was, you know, a young player in college for her ability to talk on defense and, be, you know, kind of be that quarterback that sees everything on the back of the defense uh, to, to block shots and clog the lane and give us a presence. I just think she's so good at that. And I think that how she goes about the defensive thing rubs off on other players around her. And so, you know, that was a factor, you know, I, I, you know, when we went out and got Alicia Clark last year, that was part of the plan. And so now with those kinds of players on our team, I think we can have a complete defensive unit instead of, you know, a piecemeal effect uh, or, or approach to it. I think, you know, it's, it's a more in, all encompassing um defensive concept for this group and um one follow-up to that and <laughs> you touched on it a little bit already but uh let's get it right now um you know with the way that you constructed um the way you approached free agency and we've got elena here is that confidence that we'll have um elena back out there and and that you think that um you know, she'll be able to be available in the beginning and, and, and confident that you'll have her for most of the season? I am. I mean, I'll let, I, I think that's a question that Elena can talk about now before we get into a million questions. But I think that, you know, that's something I'll let her address with everybody. Yeah, I, uh, I'll i be ready. I feel phenomenal. Um, I know everybody kind of saw me coming in this season and only playing a couple games and then obviously coming back out is like not a good sign, but actually for me, I thought that was a great um, sign that I was on the right track. I had just started with a new trainer um, and being able to even come out and play in those games when I was still experiencing pain back then was a huge uh, plus for me. And then since then I have been going to work every single day, um, working on my movements, getting so much stronger on the court now. I'm back. I haven't had pain in months now, thank goodness. <laughs> um, so I, I feel like I'm moving again, like my younger self, um, but even better and more efficient. And I have now found a way and a person who has helped me to use my movements in a way to feel good when I leave the court. So that's been crucial for me. Um, and I'm, I'm so excited uh, to get this 
season started, we've got an awesome bunch and to do it pain-free and to do it and be able to sustain it for years to come is what I'm most excited about. And just as a clarity thing, the person she's talking about, I mean, we don't have to go get into that, but it's a part of our organization that Monumental hired uh, to work with the Wizards and us uh, in particular, um, who is an expert in these kind of movements and um, things that you need to do to make sure your body's in balance and sync and, you know, all the little, you know, coordination of, you know, jumping and landing, all those kinds of things that, you know, were having to now be thought daily through uh, by Elaine as she went through this process. And I think, you know, we've all seen as coaches and, and teammates uh, what Elena has done to get ready for this. Uh, people don't know the number of hours a day she spent over the last year and a half to try to get to this point. And it's, it's very encouraging for us. Thanks both of you. And i um, glad to hear Elena. I'll share with everybody else now. Thanks. DA. Yeah. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. David Aldrich with The Athletic. Mike, I, I know this is something you've talked about for a couple of years in terms of versatility. Um, a couple of years ago it was your versatility of your bigs. <laughs> now it's the now it's defensive versatility. And I just wonder, ideally, what do you think a fully functioning team next year will be able to do just to disrupt opposing offenses? Well, I think that number one, and we we it can give us a lot of options of how to go about things. If we want to use switching against certain teams, we'll be able to switch and not have drop off. Um, you know, when you put Alicia and and Ariel and Natasha on the perimeter. Uh, we're going to make people try to feel uncomfortable every night, uh, try to get ball handlers to turn their backs to us. Uh, Elena with her length uh, bothers people in the lanes. Elizabeth with her length and her uh, defensive footwork uh, bothers people. Maisha can guard three or four positions uh, in this. We've talked about using her even some nights on point guards where she can switch and we don't get caught in mismatches. I think, um, you know, Shatori proved last year that she uh, can help our defense. Uh, that will be something when we look at the draft uh, of what we can do with our draft pick to help us in that regard. And, but, you know, we still, you still got to put the ball in the basket. And I think we have a lot of really good players that do that. I mean, we're talking about uh, a team that's been low turnover, high assists uh, when we're healthy. And I think that's what we'll get back to. But clearly, uh, we're, it's going to give us different options defensively of how we want to play teams. Thank you. Michelle. Uh, yes, Michelle Vogel from ESPN.com. Uh, Elaine, I guess if I could address this to you, obviously you've, you've been through a lot the last couple of years when you see sort of the, you know, the, the direction that, that um, the team's going with, with players like Elizabeth joining and, and Maisha, you know, coming back what are just your thoughts on how excited you are to finally you know to be back out there really for the first time without pain since I don't know <laughs> how long it's been because uh, obviously you're in a lot of pain during the finals in 2019. Yeah it's been a little while so I'm super excited about that I'm thrilled about the team we formed and when I first came to DC it was first of all to win a championship but it was also for this culture and for this like community that we built um, and the players that we're bringing back, the players that we're adding in Elizabeth and others to come, um, I just feel like we're in such a good situation where we're going to come to work every single day, get the most we can possibly can out of each and every day, and just continue to run our own race throughout the season. And I think that's going to get us to exactly where we need to be. But this is a group that I'm so excited about. We've got some age and some veterans in us, but then we've got some youth as well. Um, and I know everybody keeps talking about the defensive versatility, which we certainly have, but I'm also excited about the offensive end of the ball because we've got players who are just so unselfish and players who want to make the next play and make the play for the other person on the court. So we've, we've got endless opportunity. I'm excited for, to get started and for everybody to come back. If I could follow up with you, Elizabeth, just, you know, what's this like for you to, to join this group and, and how appealing is it to, to be with this group of players, as Elena said, not just off defensively, but what you can do offensively with this team? Yeah, I mean, I think Elena and coach touched on it, just, um, just being able to add to the culture that's already been established here. Um, 
I know everyone talks about me defensively and obviously I'm going to come in and, and be that same defensive player, but I'm going to contribute in any way that I can. So I'm just really excited to be a part of this um, to help compete for a championship, to come in every day as a pro um, and, and do what I love with, with a great group of people. So I'm just excited to be here. Thank you. Jen. Hey everybody, Jen Hadfield with the next. Uh, Coach, if I can start with you, um, is it uh, too simple to throw a Latoya Sanders comparison on Elizabeth? What do you think of that analogy, given that so many of the players from that 2019 team are still back or are with you guys? Um, I, I mean, there's some similarities in just their daily approach to basketball. I mean, they are true pros in what they come in. Um, they both, you know, are, are defensive players who block shots and do things. I think, um, I, and because I haven't coached Elizabeth myself yet, um, as she and I talked through this process, you know, I, I said to her and she asked questions about it of how we can allow her to do more things offensively, which, which was kind of my starting point with Latoya when I first started coaching her. I wasn't sure you know, quite where, you know, the limitations were or the expansion was of somebody's game. And over the course of a couple of years, uh, LaToya expanded her game. And I think that's what Elizabeth is looking at to do here. You know, she's working on, you know, her range. She's working on different things. I think that we can use her in pick and rolls. I think we can use her in some pick and pop situations, uh, low post things. Uh, the other thing is that she is, and it will help her get easier shots, is she's such a good screener that a lot of times, if you're a great screener, you'll end up being the one that's open at some point because uh, she really knows how to get teammates open. And I think, you know, we're going to try to do the same for her. We have guards that are willing to screen and do things. And so uh, I, I think that's a little bit of a fair con comparison, but I just don't know enough yet until we put this group on the court and see the different things we can do. Um, we can play different size lineups. We can do different things. So that's, you know, kind of the tinkering part of me is always looking forward to that. All right. I'll, I'll be sure to ask you in a couple of months uh, when you guys start yep. workouts. <laughs> if I can just go to Maisha real quick before I yield the floor. Yep. Um, Maisha, how, just how was the experience for you of being a free agent for the first time? And can you kind of walk us through um, your decision making and, and experience? I mean, I know you were you're restricted, but, but what was the, what was the experience like? And welcome back. Thank you. Um, it was pretty cool to be honest. <laughs> uh, at first it was like, like teams were asking me, Oh, I know it's crazy. And I'm like, no, it's, it's not getting crazy yet. And then towards the end, that's when it kind of was like picked up and got like a little crazy, but, um, no, I enjoyed it. Um, when I first, like started talking teams and speaking with my agent. Um, they were like, where do you want to be? I was like, DC, like this is, DC is like home for me. This is where I, where I'm growing up, where I want to be. So um, for me, it was always DC and then, you know, keeping my options open, but always like wanted to be back in DC. She didn't hold me hostage though. Jackie. Hey, Mike, uh, Jackie Powell with Bleacher Report. So also we heard that you hired Shelly Patterson and you brought her on to your staff. I'm curious as to how you think she impacts the development of not just the younger players, but the veterans as well. I know you spoke about, uh, you know, expanding Elizabeth's shot and Shelly has been known to be this shot doctor. So I'm curious about all of that. Um, I, you know, when we hired Shelly, it wasn't particularly uh, in mind, you know, to help one or two particular players. I think there was a multitude of things. I think um, we had gone with one less coach on our staff last year as we were trying to figure out what we wanted to do. And I didn't want to hire somebody until I was sure what we wanted or what we wanted to do. Um, and so uh, I've known Shelly since I've first been in the league, you know, as, as an opponent uh, assistant coach. And I've always been struck by, you know, her knowledge of the game. I know she's been responsible for a lot of the scouting report preparation on teams. 
Um, I've talked to players who played on teams she's coached and their influ her influence. I think it's a, a voice uh, in, you know, I have kind of a younger coaching staff um, and it's a voice that, you know, has a long-term history perspective of our league. I mean, she's been in the league longer than I have. And so um, it's somebody that, you know, when we're talking about how th people did things 15, 20 years ago, uh, there's, there's, there's a reference point for her that, you know, maybe other people don't have. I think that I like, I like different voices in our coaching staff that aren't afraid to speak up and, and speak their mind. And I, I think that Shelly will bring an honesty to our staff that, you know, sometimes you need to constantly reevaluate yourself as a head coach or staff. And I think that's something that, you know, I wanted to bring into our staff. Uh, she and uh, Eric have had a, you know, great relationship as far as over the last 10 years, trading scouting reports on teams and talking about different teams in the league because we were in different conferences up until she went to New York. And so we could talk about that. And I just, it was something that kind of came naturally to us uh, to want to talk to her about coming here. And after all the situation in New York, it was the opportune time for us to, to have that conversation. Great. I, I appreciate that. And, and Elena, for you, you know, there are a lot of familiar names that are coming back onto this new roster, but can you explain to me maybe how you think the identity of the group in 2022 is either different or has evolved um, from what you were a part of in 2019? I think every year a team is different, even if you bring back the exact same players and the exact same coaching staff. Um, no year ever plays out the same. Um, and yes, I know we're bringing back a ton of people from, from 2019, but a lot of that is the culture um, and the environment they were able to bring and what they were able to do um, and how they wanted to play their role as best as they could is something that we wanted to see again in this team. Uh, but certainly this is a brand new year. We've got new people, we've got new pieces, we've got some new coaches. Um, and each year, you hope that each player has developed in a way that they're a little bit different as well. But I'm, I'm super excited about the group we have up here. <laughs> I think that's huge. And then here as well, um, if you got those things and you can create a great locker room, the stuff on the court tends to kind of play its way out um, in a good way. So I think we're in that situation and we're setting ourselves up for a great season in that way. Thank you. Thank you so much. Tyler. Tyler Byron, NBC Sports Washington. Really, congratulations to everybody on this call for the past several weeks. I, I kind of want to start with Mike. Mike, I know you had a lot of uh, free agents going into this offseason, three big ones with Emma, Maisha, and Tina. Obviously, with cap space, it kind of constrained what you were able to do, but was there ever a shot of you considering bringing back a second of those two out of three free agents or was it just it never came to be and you had to decide obviously from Aisha? Um, I, I think there's two parts of that. Um, we decided earlier on, uh, early on in the process to uh, pri prioritize things. And you know, actually Maisha and I talked about if there was a way to figure out how to get her and Emma together on this team. And we both were trying to figure out a way to do that. And as it turned, it out, turned out, I mean, uh, made her own decision for us. I think, you know, I think all of us here would have liked to have found a way to do that, um, but it didn't happen. And, you know, it, it was only because, and we, and we would have still tried to pursue uh, Elizabeth anyway, if we could have figured out a way to do it. So that was, but, but early on, once we knew where we were headed, uh, I made Maisha and Elizabeth the targets of what we were doing. And I thought that, that, you know, it, it's it's the nature, you know, everybody talked about when we had the new collective bargaining a couple, couple of years ago. Oh, yeah, all the players are going to get a lot richer and they're all going to do this. Well, it's it's easier said than done. You know, I think somebody tried to throw out there what an average salary would be for, you know, 120 or 130 thousand dollars a year. Well, that's an average. As soon as one player makes 200, so, you know, that average drops for somebody else. And so you have to figure out uh, how to get uh you know, the best players who fit things. And, and honestly, I mean, you know, Elizabeth made a sacrifice in, in many ways to come to this team because of her desire to be with a certain kind of group and, and to win. And, 
you know, that's, that's a compliment to her that, you know, I couldn't give her exactly what I would have loved to have given her. That's a factor, you know, in, in any player's decision or an organization's. But I think that, you know, her coming here will pay off for her and for us in the long run. Um, and, you know, um, if I only coach for money, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be here either. Uh, I would be at, you know, some university or somewhere else, you know, doing something different, but I don't coach for money. Uh, and so I like getting up every day to go to work with people I love every day uh, that I like being around. And, um, you know, we tried to put together a group that fit that kind of mold. And so um, it made it very simple for me to want these two players to be, the, you know, the key, uh, you know, signings for us this offseason. My second question is for Maisha. Uh, we talked about your journey a lot and what you were doing in the 2018 and 2019 seasons to prepare yourself to be ready for your opportunity. You showed out in 2020, and then last year you obviously had different challenges with your injury and the schedule and whatnot. But how does it feel to secure the bag and get a big contract for yourself and have that type of relief of what you've been able to build? Yeah, um, it feels good. Uh... <laughs> Like after like I signed the contract, I went out to dinner and treated myself to a nice steak. So um, it's it. I mean, it feels like really good. But I'm still still going to continue to like grow and get better um, and help the team. But I'm super excited. <laughs> Thank you. Congrats again, everyone. Howard. Thank you. Elizabeth, Maisha, congratulations. Elena, great to see you and welcome back. And Mike, uh, congratulations as well. Um, got a couple here. Uh, Maisha, just real quick, where did you go to dinner? Have, it's called, oh, the restaurant's called Set of Meat Lab. I'm in Italy right now. Um, mm -hmm. So the restaurant is called Set of Meat Lab. If you guys are ever in Bologna, tell them I sent you the best steak oh my gosh and they have so many different kinds it's it's amazing they have an instagram so go look at their instagram actually excellent I, I will so okay. to, to the to, to the basketball matters and for you to be part of this team you know over the last couple of years you've obviously proven you can be a top option offensively but your assist percentage continues to go up as well and i just i wonder when you sort of balance the role you wanted to have how much did that play a part in thinking about DC? Yeah, um, so I know like being four seasons already. So like I already know the, my teammates. So it's like easier. So it, was, so it would have been easier rather than going to another team and then, you know, just having to, to play with different players. Now just playing with the um, same players from the 2019 team also, um, it's just easier. And I, and I know where they like the ball. They know where I like the ball. So it's just going to just, just, we're just going to get better, I think, to be honest. And, and Elizabeth, you know, I remember having a conversation with you, I think it was during the 2018 playoffs. It was, you know, when you guys were battling uh, in, in the best of five against that Mystics team. And it was a lot of conversation about how they're able to get players the ball where you wanted it and having more spacing given the opportunity. I, I know, you know, we're kind of talking about where you're taking shots on the floor, but how much of this is going to be you getting better looks at the basket, given, you know, the makeup of this team and the way in which they can space the floor. Yeah. I mean, I think that's a lot of it when you're playing with great players, um, it makes it easy. And when you're playing with great players who are also unselfish, it's like the easiest. So that's why I'm really excited to just come in and, you know, just play my role within that um, and know that I'll be able to be as successful and they will too. Um, it, it's, it's always great playing against great players who are selfish. And just for Elena, you know, you talk about being pain free. You talk about being able to feel like you have uh, earlier in your career, if not better. I'm just wondering if there was a moment that you've been able to grab onto recently, a, a thing you were able to do, something where you felt, you know, wow, this, this really feels like it should. Yeah, I had a uh, day on the court recently where I was working a lot on my off the block, like pivots and reverse pivots and counter moves. Um, and in that moment, it was like, wow, 
I feel so good right now. I feel springy. I feel like I'm able to change direction. Um, it, it just felt right. And I hadn't felt that in such a long time. And also you always worry with a back like rotation. So knowing that I was able to get into a spin move and then get into a pump bake and a step through, um, and to be able to handle that type of rotation for a good long, I mean, it was about an hour and a half workout. Um, that was something that really made me feel like, all right, this is just another great step and we'll keep going. That's awesome. Thank you all very much. Thanks. Hi everyone. Um, so great to be here. So just two quick questions um, for Elizabeth. Just walk me through your process of signing with the Mystics. Yeah. So um, I talked to a couple teams, um, talked to Atlanta first, obviously, because I've spent pretty much my whole career there outside of my draft year. Um, but yeah, I talked to Coach T a couple times and I think just in my conversations with him and, and having players reach out, like Elena reached out, I, that was really meaningful for me um, and feeling like I was really comfortable in that space and I could just add to the team. Um, and I could come into a culture that's already established with players that are already established that want to compete for a championship. Uh, that was really important to me. So that's essentially how I, I came to the decision. All right. Thank you. Congratulations. And Elena, from that, I, I heard that you reached out to Elizabeth, but what kind of role do you have in the recruiting um, of free agents for the Mystics? Coach T can tell you, I'm in his office every single day. I'm like, all right, what do we got? What's happening? What calls do we have today? <laughs> so um, I'm, I'm pretty involved in it. Uh, I try not to be like overwhelming to, you know, Coach T and also different players because I know it's a process that they need to go through um, without kind of being bombarded. But I certainly reach out when it's a player. I'm like, we need this person. Like Elizabeth, I'm like, can I text her yet? Like, okay, cool. I'm going to text her and let her know how important she would be to this program. So, um, I mean, this is, this is our team. It's part of the off season. Like if you want to grow this team and you want this organization to be all it can be, of course, I'm going to reach out and uh, do my best to get, you know, the right people on board. All right. Thank you so much. Yep. I'd like to add to that too, is that, you know, it's, it, I think every, every good team, has players. So a year ago when we were recruiting Alicia Clark, uh, Elena and Natasha uh, were really big on that. Make sure this year, you know, Elena and uh, Alicia came to me and said, we're going to, we're going to talk to Elizabeth. We're going to make sure, you know, um, and so, you know, to introduce them, they all know Maisha, but they, you know, to bring a new player in, that new player has to know that the players there uh, have a comfort level with their teammates and their coaches. And then everybody kind of talks about this and works about this together. Uh, we try to give our veteran players, uh, you know, decision-making in, in, in several areas as, se as the season goes on, whether it be travel or, you know, how we're feeling, whether we're tired, how long we should go and practice to get a feel for our team. And, and I think that's one of the better things about our organization when we talk about our culture is that our players feel comfortable enough to walk into my office and say, hey, what do you think about this? Or what do you know about this? Because they, they have a vested interest in it. They, 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 they want to play with certain people. And it says a lot about Elizabeth or Maisha that their teammates wanted them to be here too. Yeah, that's awesome. Thank you. Gabe? Sorry, my dog is barking if you guys hear him. Um, uh, Elena, I just wanted to ask you, do you anticipate like any minutes restrictions when you start or any rest games or anything like that? I mean, I, that's not even something I'm thinking about. I feel like I'm going to be ready and back to do whatever I possibly need to do. I, I don't know what coach has in mind. Um, I'm sure, you know, there's moments where maybe it's like, Hey, there's a lot of travel here. Let's, let's get a little rest here. That's why uh, we built this team. It's got so much depth. We know the importance of it, um, but I plan to be ready um, and to be prepared for any minutes I need to possibly play. But certainly you want a team that is so full of depth that you don't need, you know, 38 minutes out of your players because it's a long season. It's grueling and you want to be ready for the playoffs. 
Okay. Uh, and Elizabeth, uh, I know Alicia, when she came last year, she mentioned a bunch of, you know, off court things in DC that she wanted to explore. And I just wanted to know if there was anything like that for you where you're looking at DC and you really want to do something in this city. Oh yeah. I mean, I think the first thing that comes to mind is just like the political landscape that's there. And you got to think about all the stuff that we did in the bubble and all this stuff that happened with the dream. Um, so just remaining involved in that and just DC is a dope city. Um, like, like coach said, I grew up in Virginia beach, so I was there a lot. Um, so being able to just go to restaurants and, and just hang out and just be around, I'm excited for that too. Thanks so much. And welcome to the team. I'm already Thank trying you. to decide what political campaign when she runs for something <laughs> I'm going to have to be uh, out stumping for her. That was the exact <laughs> answer I was looking for, by the way. So thank you very much. We have time for two more questions. We'll start with Christy. Hello, everybody. Uh, so good to see everyone. Uh, Mike, I'm going to start with you with, with Tiana coming back. I know at the beginning of this conversation, you said that, that you missed her last season. What was it exactly that, that you missed from her contributions on the court? Um, I mean, I think Elena could speak to this really well, too, and Maisha. Uh, she's such a great teammate. Um, Tiana might be one of the best teammates you could have uh, because she understands, um, you know, filling a role to help you win. Um, clearly, her skills, you know, I mean, she's a three-point shooter. Uh, she's a good rebounder, particularly at the offensive end. Um, she's got low post ability. And so, and she's, and she's selfless. And I think that, you know, she's also a player that it's funny sometimes when coaches, you know, ask a hard question in a locker room, some people go quiet right away. They're afraid to give the wrong answer. Maisha uh, uh, can tell you that Tiana is probably the first to speak up, you know, uh, to, to, to put herself out there uh, for her teammates. And um, I think we missed that last year, uh, to have those kind of players sometimes, particularly when, you know, we're on the road and Elena and Alicia weren't with us and they weren't traveling and, you know, we were beat up and injured. It's nice to have somebody who just can fill almost any role. We've played her at three, we've played her at four, we've played her at five. Uh, she'll step up and take on uh, whatever challenge you throw at her. And I think that, you know, she missed this camaraderie here uh, when she was gone. And, you know, one of her first priorities was she told me, she says, I think that Atlanta's probably going to release me because of my contract. I would love to come back. And we're, like we raised our hands right away. Like, yeah, we want you back. And I think that was unanimous throughout our team. And I think that's a big contribution to bring back to our to our locker room. Awesome. And Elena, first of all, welcome back. Great to see you as well. And just the perspective of missing the game, the way that you have the last couple of seasons, how has that changed you and your approach to these workouts that you're talking about where you said you feel phenomenal? Is that not just physically phenomenal, but I'm sure there's some mental um, aspects of that word phenomenal to your workouts as well. Yeah, it's not even just missing the game, but when there's that moment of like, this game might be taken away from me and I might have no say in it, my body is just not doing what it's supposed to, do, to be. Um, and that fear of maybe that was it is awful. Um, and it's, it's almost like reborn me as a new, not just basketball player, but person, um, the small details that I take in every day and how much I enjoy each day and the new challenges that I'm facing and I'm able to explore um, and finding these little, you know, different things to lock into to improve my game um, and to be, you know, a better player, a better person, a better teammate. So this has been like the rebirth of me uh, for so many reasons, but because there were so many moments where it was like, this might be it. And unfortunately, I didn't have a say in it. Like you want it to be your decision when you decide to stop playing. <laughs> so for me to be able to lock into this and find a new way um, and a new push and to feel so great now is something that's just so exciting. And I find so much joy in it every day. Phenomenal answer. <laughs> um, <laughs> lastly, lastly for um, Elizabeth, um, I've known you since your Duke days and I know how close you are to your family. What was 
their reaction when you decided to come closer to home? They're really excited. My mom was like, well, you know, you're going to see me at every single game now. <laughs> um, so yeah, they're just excited to be close and um, it's great to even be able to like have my high school coach come to games and um, people like from Boo Williams and stuff like that. So you know, a lot of us in the W, there are only 12 teams. So a lot of us aren't so lucky to be so close to home. So I am really excited about that. Thank you. Christos. Hello, Chris Santos, this is Dean English. Hope you're doing well, everyone. Uh, Elena, a question for you. How, what is your mindset ahead of this season and how, how confident you are about uh, the championship uh, opportunity that you have with the team? <laughs> On mute. First time uh, doing a Zoom call, sorry. <laughs> um, I Every single year, the, the goal is always the championship. This year, it's an even more exciting um, time for me to know that I'm in a position to be back and to be healthy for my teammates. Um, but also these new pieces that we're bringing on uh, really puts us in a great situation to be where we need to be at the end of the season to try to win another one. So for me, I am super excited. I know, you know, there's more work to be done um, and I'll be doing that every single day until the season comes around and through the season. But um, when you've got a great group, it's really something you're excited to come to work for and um, I'm ready to get started. And for you, Maisha, last season you had such a productive season. How Confident and how how big boost you get about this season to make it uh, to make, take your game on another level? Yeah, um, so I'm super excited for this opportunity because I mean, like I was talking to Coach T during this process, I want to take my game to the next level. Um, I I know what I can do. I, my teammates know what I'm capable of doing. So now it's just just going out there and just doing the work. So um, I'm super excited. To, to take the game, to take my game to the next level. And lastly, for you, Coach, how, what do you see about uh, Becky Hammond's uh, uh, move as Mega Sixes? How, how excited you are? I'm sorry, I couldn't hear all of that. Yeah. How, what did you, how do you see the Becky Hammond's move to Las Vegas, join the Aces as a new head coach? We're, what, all gonna try to kick, we're all going to try to kick her butt is what we're going to try to do. <laughs> Welcome to the league. <laughs> That's a great answer. Thank you very much, folks. Thank you very much. John? Yes, uh, I have a question for Elena. When you were off during all that time, did it give you any... Um, I guess, thought into what you might do after playing, maybe coaching in the WNBA? Thank you. Um, I was not off. <laughs> I think I was in the gym more well, than when I was three healthy. Games, but yeah. But yeah. <laughs> um, no, I was too focused on getting back. Um, certainly, I know that, you know, my playing career will come to an end at some point, but I feel like if I allowed myself to start planning for what's next, I wouldn't have been able to put all the time and effort that I did into what it took to get to where I am today. So who knows what it'll be? I love this game. I'm sure in some way or capacity, um, I will still be involved in the game, uh, but I still want to play basketball for a little bit. Um, I'm going to jump in here just for one sec. I don't know, John, if you had another question. Uh, Elena ne needs to get off. She has another uh, thing that she has to do here in a few minutes. Um, I will stay on and I hope that maybe Elizabeth and Maisha can stay on a few more minutes. It's getting late where they are overseas, but uh, we'll try to go a few minutes, but I know Elena has to get off. Um, I, Elena, if you want, might want to ask one, I'll ask the question for everybody else. Um, they just kind of wanted to know uh, what, what the deal is with USA basketball and what you're doing so that they explain uh, as we go forward in the next week. Yeah, for sure. Um... First of all, I'm excited to be back with USA Basketball. Right now, in the way that I'm progressing on the court, I'm still doing a lot of individual work and individual skill. So I haven't gotten into, you know, playing against others quite yet. Like right now, it's still a little bit of one-on-one. -on -one. So I see with USA Basketball playing some 5-on-0, 
um, doing a lot of shooting um, and just being there as a leader, because obviously there's a good amount of change in the different players that we have coming back for camp. Um, but I'm super excited to hop into a team atmosphere, um, partake as much as I can and continue on my progress and getting ready for Mystic season. Thanks. Thanks everyone. Coach, Coach Tibbs, I did have another question for you, if that's all right. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, I know Elena had talked about uh, her minutes, but as far as you're concerned, because you're the coach, <laughs> Do you have any restrictions on her minutes starting the season, being that she only played three games last year? Thank you. We're, I mean, we're only three months away. We're three months away. Not only, we are three months away. So um, that's going to be decided as much by our doctors and training staff as to where she is. Um, you know, the people she's working with on a daily basis right now will kind of guide me a little bit as to where they think she is and let her body, you know, with a condensed season, uh, there's probably an opportunity maybe to think about, you know, do we have her take a game off here if in, here or there in a very tough spell? But that's not something we've got to. We, when, unlike the NBA, we don't have, you know, this overload of back-to-back -back games, uh, but we are going to limit, you know, it, it may be as much as we limit it in practice time as much as we do games. Uh, and we're going to be doing that for, you know, probably all of our team, uh, given the situation. We're going to have a very uh, condensed schedule. Um, and very few break opportunities. So I'm going to try to give our entire team uh, some break time uh, as we best suit it. I don't have a number that nobody's thrown out a number like 22 minutes, 25 minutes. I don't think we're going to be that that way unless something, you know, just says, hey, maybe we need to be a little more careful at the start. But, uh, you know, for her course of action, we're looking at early April of her being able, you know, to play flat five on five pickup games and find out where she is. And, you know, you have a couple of weeks of three weeks of training camp to kind of figure some out, something out with, you know, two or three exhibition games. So, you know, that'll be a work in progress, but I'm not putting any hard number on it at this point. Nobody is. Jen, did you have another question? Yeah, that'd be great. Um, for for uh, Elizabeth and Maisha, I'm just curious to ask a little bit more about Tiana, because obviously Maisha for you, you know, a former teammate coming back and then. Elizabeth, having played with with Tiana last year in Atlanta, just curious um, how that feels to you to be to be, re, you know, coming with her to D.C., just so to speak. So if you could both just comment on having uh, Tiana back in D.C. Yeah, <clears throat> I can go first. Um, I mean, T was great. Uh, we actually our lockers were next to each other. Um, so we were talking a lot and. You know, we talked a lot about just like being on a championship team and what that feels like and being in that environment. So I'm excited to be back here, like back in D.C. doing that with her um, and just, you know, feeling that change um, and, you know, seeing how we can both feel confident in our games in, back in this type of environment. Uh I think we all miss TT. <laughs> I remember when we played Atlanta, when they came to D.C., and she was like walking in the back with um, little E and me and A like ran up to her like, oh, we miss you so much. We need you back. We need you back. So, I mean, Coach T said it like TT is like one of the one of the best teammates you'll ever have. Um, just the just the type of person she is like you can be having like a down day and you see TT. She's always smiling like on the court. Like she's just she's just serious, but like goofy. So it's like you just love being around her. Um, and then you got little E too. So I'm just happy to have him back because in the bubble, that was my guy. So like, I'm just happy that um, we can, we have them back um, in DC playing with us. So I'm excited for that. Coach, was little E a factor? Was it a little, well, having a, having a littler, we have Biggie and now a little E and then Elena and now Elizabeth Williams. We got too many E's around here to try to figure out what we're going to do. We're going to have to assign new names to everybody to start the season. Coach, if I can just squeeze in one more, uh, what can you say about what else you may or may not have cooking? Like how much more do you feel like you need to round out this squad? Um, we have, we have a, a one more. Well, we have a couple of things. So first of all, later today, uh, we will uh, announce that uh, the two players that we had signed uh, a year or two ago, uh, Clara Lundquist and Lee Sol Kang, will uh, sign uh, new contracts to come to training camp. So 
it's an opportunity for us to look at them. Um, but we have one more signing that I can't announce yet. Uh, hopefully in the next couple of days, has some things to kind of work through. Um, but I think people will be very intrigued by it when we do it. So I'll leave the mystery out there. Jackie. So I want to build upon that question a little bit in just that um, I'm curious as to how you all are going to handle the, the backup point guard uh, position uh, behind. Well, this. there you go. Okay. Okay. I, ju I just <laughs> thought I would <laughs> unwrap another clue, but thank you. Cream. Hey, Mike, I did have one more, and that actually kind of made me think about something. You know, um, you're going into free agent. You also have the number one pick, and, you know, I know what happens in free agency can affect how you approach that pick. So has these last couple of days and these signings kind of um, affected what your thought process is, how you'll approach that? Are you more likely to keep it at this point? I would say um, unless something wacky happens, we plan on keeping the pick. I mean, we've that's been our goal since the start. Um, I've always throw it out there when you get the number one pick to, you know, if you want to tease somebody along the way and let some team do something to help you out. But um, our plan was to keep the pick. Uh, we've narrowed it to a small group of players. Um, and that'll be when, once I'm done with USA basketball, that'll be the thrust of a lot of what I have to do. Uh, the, the last part of February and March as we get ready for the draft. Um, you know, I think we have some thoughts internally about where we're going with that, but uh, I'm going to stay pretty open minded for a while right now. Cool, cool. Quick and easy. Thank you. Megan. Um, yes, this question is for coach. Um, can you tell me what your thoughts are on the season and the playoffs expanding and what differences do you see within the league growth this year compared to last year? Um, I mean, I think, you know, the, the playoff scenario, I've said it before. I mean, I think I'm, I'm happy we're playing series. I hope that at some point, uh, you know, down the road that they all can be best of five series. Um, I think that would be, um, amazing for the league. Um, I'll leave it at that. Um, I think that, um, what we see, you know, just this free agency period has said something about our league. For the last two or three years, uh, we have now become a discussion league uh, in the offseason. I, I, I always felt for a long time in the league that we hadn't figured out a way uh, to be relevant uh, year round. And now we've seen between the draft lottery and the start of free agency a way for our league uh, to be relevant, uh, you know, for a longer period of the year. I think we have so many amazing players in our league that the talent level, um, you know, I, I, I'm not in the camp necessarily that says we have, you know, uh, talent level to all of a sudden, you know, next week expand to four, four more, you know, teams. But I do think we have a talent level of players in our league who, who are really at, at, the, at the highest peak I've seen. Um, you know, we, so, since I came in the league, uh, I would say it's grown by leaps and bounds in every skill area that you can think of. Um, I think we have, you know, great athletes who are smart, um, who can do so many things on the court that, it, you know, I mean, I come from an NBA background and I haven't decided to go back because I love doing this. And so I think that the league um, is setting uh, a high bar right now for what, uh, good women's professional sports should look like. We still have a ways to go. We still have to do a lot better in many areas, but I feel like um, there's a better partnership between players and the league than there used to be. I think that can still continue to grow, but I think we came out of the last collective bargaining agree agreement feeling like we're making some progress. Um, I'll never be satisfied with where we are. I don't think the players would be. I know Elizabeth and Elena have both been on the executive council. Elizabeth one of the officers in the association and there's a lot left to do, but um, we're, we're headed in the right direction in many areas. 
Awesome. Thank you very much and um, good luck on your upcoming season. Thank you. Teresa. Hi, thanks. I'm Teresa Ceballos with the Queen Ballers Club. Uh, this question is for coach. Um, obviously, everyone's goal when they're joining a team is to you know win the championship. But beyond that, when you're talking to free agents and kind of negotiating, how much of the conversations that you're having are about their individual goals as a player versus the goals for the team? I think we have a lot of conversations about individual goals on and off the court. Um, you know, the players who have been here know the things we're trying to implement here. Uh, Elizabeth had the opportunity during this process to quiz our entire staff. We had, you know, um, medical people on. We had, you know, all of our coaching staff, player development uh, to ask those things. We've made a, you know, an important part of monumental basketball with all three of our teams is to have um, a, a, an ability to, you know, go in and talk about, you know, your career beyond basketball or things you like being involved in off the court, whether it's a charitable organization or a political activity. Um, we have encouraged that. We have people on staff here to facilitate that. Um, we want to be able to help them with, you know, any kind of other planning they want to do. But I think that, you know, DC on obviously has a lot to offer that probably more than you know, the majority of the cities in the country, because, you know, we have so many different kinds of people here from all different backgrounds, you know, with the government and with the military and other businesses um, that, you know, DC offers uh, an opportunity uh, for players to explore just about anything they want to explore. And so I think that's important. We have a social justice council made up of both wizards and mystics players uh, to, you know, address things. Maisha was part of organizing a major organizer of the March that we had, uh, two years ago, uh, our season. And I think that, you know, I, I won't speak for her, but I think she felt at the time that there were people here, you know, trying to help facilitate that rather than make it hard to do. And I think that's a big part of it. I'll let them, you know, address any part of that, that they want to. Yeah, that's fantastic. That would be yeah great if, if you all could comment, Elizabeth and Maisha, you know, if you felt like you got support in those endeavors. It's fantastic. Yeah, yeah, I think that was a that was a part of the decision in coming to D.C. Um, you know, it's it's one thing to play for a team, but you're also, you know, representing a community and you're joining a community and being part of it. So knowing um, what I can do to be involved in how you know I can expand on and off the court like that's that's just as important I think in free agency so it was really good to ask those questions and have those conversations and know um, that DC is a great city for all of that. Um, and then for me um, that was a big step for for me personally because I mean I'm not like one that speaks up all the time of what's going on in the world so for me, it was something huge. And I remember I texted Tosh like, hey, Tosh, you, do you think we should do this? And she's like, yes. And then she reached out to people of Monumental Sports. And I mean, once your teammates and your coaches and the whole Monumental Sports is behind you, like you feel you, you feel like you can do anything in D.C. And not even just D.C. because um, in the bubble, when we took a stand in the bubble, um, we were actually about to play um, Atlanta and they were with us, too. So, um, I mean, once, once you have people in your corner, it's, you feel like you can accomplish anything um, and, they, and they have the best interest at heart. Um, so it, it's great playing for an organization who actually cares not only what you're doing on the basketball court, but off the court as well. I think one other part of that, Teresa, is for me, I mean, I've been doing this a long time and as a coach, you can keep doing it, but as players or coaches, you know, we have other interests, things we want to do. And as a player, your career is a pretty, you know, finite number as far as, you know, the length of your life. You're going to play basketball as a pro for, you know, 10, 15 years, but you have a whole lot left, a lot left of your life. And so I think it's our responsibility uh, to help provide any opportunity or any guidance we can in making sure that what they do after playing for us is, 
is meaningful to them. If there's something we can do career-wise, I think it's on us to do that because we're only going to do this, you know, for a short amount of time. I'm one of the lucky ones that still gets to do my hobby as my job, but you know, it's, it's, uh, it, it's, it's not that way for everybody. And so I think that, you know, you, you want to make, I want to look back to this and I would like, I've told our players this, I would like them to, you know, wake up, you know, 15 years after they're done playing and say to themselves, man, that was one of the best experiences of my life. I made lifelong friends. I got something out of it beyond just the basketball experience. Cause if you, ha- if you can't do that somewhere down the road, then we missed out on something. It's fantastic. Thanks all so much and congratulations and good luck with the season. Rafiq. This is Rafiq with Nothing But That Sports Talk. I got a question for Maisha Hines Allen. I want to get you, I want to ask you, like, what will Elizabeth Williams add to the offensive defensive skill sets that you guys were missing last season? Yeah. Um, I mean, we touched on it already. She's a great defender, uh, shot blocker. Uh, so, like, when we're out pressuring guards, post players, making them put it on the ground, we know that that we have help on the backside and Elizabeth just knock it, knock the shot off and we're going on the other way for a transition because that's when we play our best ball is in transition. So now knowing that we have a shot blocker, um, super excited about that. Um, offensively, I mean, like the way she just plays, like coach mentioned, she doesn't demand a lot of attention. So she's gonna, she's a great screener. So she's gonna be able to get the ball in, 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 in different ways and, and be able to score. So she's just gonna help us a lot <laughs> defensively and offensively. And adding TT onto the team, team, like how difficult was it actually playing against or having to guard her at any point during your career? Um, guard, I mean, guarding TT is, is hard because she's you don't know what she's going to do and I mean if you ask her she probably doesn't know what she's going to do but like she's such an amazing player um so I kind of got luck because I played with her for for three years so like in practice we would go at go at it um so when we played each other uh last year uh it was kind of like not like practice because it was a game but like kind of know what she likes to do so it was it was, it was simple but I'm happy to have her back on the team so I don't have to, <laughs> to guard her anymore. Appreciate your insight and good luck during the season when it comes. Thank you.